Jax. Have you ever heard of a coasterite? Well, coasterite is a term for one who travels the country riding roller coasters. By now, it has become such a popular pastime that a meeting of the coasterites took place at the first National Roller Coaster Conference, held at Cedar Point Amusement Park in Sandusky, Ohio. Marathon riders, authorities, sociologists, and psychologists all gathered to discuss and ride on roller coasters. And I'm sure that there's specialized knowledge here. In fact, some of it strikes me as a little ironic. Uh, I was mentioning yesterday that, uh, that, from what I can gather, the front of the roller coaster is really less stressful after all than the back part of the roller coaster to anybody who seems to ride it regularly. Uh, that doesn't mean that there aren't special pleasures of the front, but the point is that the first time you're worried about a roller coaster, you might be better off riding in the front, because you're not at the tail end of the whip, essentially. Now, the average fellow getting on a roller coaster, I'm sure, as did I until finding this out, would have thought, oh boy, the most dangerous place must be the front. Because you're right there, and it's right, you know, nobody in front of you to tell you how to act and so on. It must be the worst place. So I'm going to get in the safe part of the back. Because that's what we do. You know, we get in the back of buses, we get in the back of planes and so on. We figure that's the safe part. Well, there's a certain irony here, it seems to me, because the guy who says, I'm going to prove how macho I am, I'm going to really conquer my fear, I'm going to get in the toughest place, and he gets in front. When he finishes the ride, he must feel like, gee, it wasn't so bad after all, in many cases. Whereas that poor milk toast fellow who gets in the back, he's probably never going to ride again. So one of the things you might predict is that people who ride in the front of roller coasters are more likely to ride again. People who ride in the back for the first time are less likely to bother to, to go on it again, uh, just because of this kind of discrepancy. I've ridden on every roller coaster in the country by this time. That's about 150. I'll never forget uh, my first trip, uh, first roller coaster trip. I went with a friend and we went across the country and in one month we rode 81 different roller coasters. Uh, it was about oh, five rides a piece. Yeah, it was about four to 500 rides total on that trip. What makes a good roller coaster? Well, it's not the size of it. It's, it's how a roller coaster's drops and turns are put together to make one nonstop ride. You can have a mile long coaster, but if it's boring, that's not gonna do you any good. Better a half a mile and a lot of turns, a lot of dips, one after the other, so that by the time you pull to the station, you say, hey, that was great, you know, and it's, it's over with, and you have to go on it again to realize just what happened. That's a great roller coaster. I brought my model here to Cedar Point's Coaster Mania Conference because since Cedar Point just opened up one of the world's largest roller coasters, I thought I'd bring the world's smallest operating coaster. It took me two years to build this model, and it's my conception of what type of roller coaster would be built today by one of the modern coaster designers, such as John Allen, if a park ordered a roller coaster with a limited amount of space available to build it. This is not one of the double racing designs. It's a single track design. Uh, you can see it's folded back on itself several times. This is to save space. I built this model piece by piece from balsa wood, and the whole works was assembled by hand and painted by hand. And uh, I had no computer to help me with this like they do when they build a real thing. My next project will be a little bit larger and more ambitious than this one. I'm not quite sure which direction I'm going to go yet. It may be one of these corkscrew type upside down looping coasters, or it might be a double racer. Who knows, but it'll be bigger. Well, last year, uh, after exhausting all our coaster resources here in California, we decided to head out to Denver, where we heard there was an assortment of roller coasters. We got in the car and took the trip to Denver, and sure enough, we found a coaster that we love a lot, and that's Mr. Twister in Elitch's Gardens. First time we got on that ride and took the first drop, it just blew our heads right off. We couldn't believe it. In fact, it reminded us of a coaster that's uh, dear to our hearts here in California called Belmont. Belmont Park. The, the Mission Beach Roller Coaster. And we started going down there, and a friend of mine and I uh, got into riding, uh, to doing different moves on the coaster, standing up and, and, and changing cars, and the operators got to know us and allowed us to do so. It was like putting on a show for the people. And uh, we got into a thing, they let us ride continuous. So we would ride, uh, you know, like first time we got on, or second time we were on it, we rode uh, 64 times nonstop, doing our little acrobatics. Next time I came back, Jan came with me, and uh, we rode 49 times. She's the only girl I've known that can sit on a coaster like that and ride 49 times. I definitely like wood roller coasters a lot better. Um, I find that 
the thrill that you that you get on the wood, you can't get on the metal roller coasters. You don't get the movement, you don't get the whole feel like you do on the on the wood. The metal ones feel tame. Yeah. You don't worry about metal them. Metal coasters are tame, you know, like the wood coaster, I think there's an element of fear in, in the average rider's head. You get they're getting on that and they see that wood flexing and they yeah. think, whoa, maybe we're not gonna make it back to the station. And I think that's a very important part. Back next year. We're going to go back east to the uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio area, try and hit the New York, New Jersey area, because there's more wood roller coasters per square mile in that area than anywhere else in the country. We figure we can go back there and take three weeks, and we can probably canvas some 20-some-odd 20, 20 roller coasters, wood roller coasters.